Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah In a fantastic chapter Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala said in Riyadh Salaheen He said, Bab sitar al-awrat al-Muslimin Wa nahi an isha'atiha Li ghayri durura Very beautiful Imam Manoe said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, the chapter of concealing the aura of the Muslims and the prohibition of advertising or exploiting their aura without the need to do so. You know, unless there's a necessity. <clears throat> and then he began the chapter with the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Qala Allahu Ta'ala Inna ladhina yuhibbuna an tu shi'a al-fahisha fi al-ladhina amanu lahum adhabu nareen fi al-dunya wal-akhira wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem in this ayah Verily, those <coughs> who love to spread wickedness about those who believe, for them is a painful torment in this life as well as the hereafter. And Allah knows and you do not know. Before we talk about the benefits of this ayah, Look at just the the zahir meaning of this nas, the, the apparent meaning of this text. Inna ladina yuhibbuna an tu shi'a al fahishatu fil ladina amanu. Verily, those who love to spread wickedness about those who believe. For them is a painful torment. In this life as well as the hereafter. And the law knows and you do not know. That is a severe and stern warning to us as believers. To be very, very cautious with our tongues. And of course, I have to speak about this. Look at all the sins we gain with our tongues, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, about is there anything else greater that makes people get thrown into the hellfire, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when he was asked about the tongues, about people saying about the tongues, speaking ill uh, with their tongues. How many of us are easy to backbite? How many of us are easy to slander? How many of us are easy to speak about our brothers and sisters because of something we heard which may or may not be true? And then we spread that wickedness because we enjoy to spread the wickedness. Let's look at some of the benefits of this ayat. First, aura, the term aura that uh, Imam Anawi used when he said sitr al awrat uh, is of two types the aura. Hesia wa aura wa auratul manawiya. So it's of two types: the aura, which has to do with uh, that deals with your senses, your 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 physical aura, your your aura uh, uh, about yourself, your personal, your 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 physical aura. You know, covering your, for example, your private parts. Right now, my aura is covered. I'm not showing my private parts. I'm not showing myself. Instead, I'm wearing a thobe and I'm covering my aura. That's the hisiyah. That's the physical aura. And then the aura al-ma'nawi, and I can't think of a appropriate, appropriate translation right now of aura, but this is the aura ma'nawi, referring to the aura, which has to do with uh, someone's shortcomings, their weak, you know, mistakes they make and their sins that they may do, uh, and things and their uh, things with their manners and things that they do that are wrong. 
Okay, so let's make sure we understand that. Al Aura Hisiya Hiya Ma Yuhrim Nadr Ilay. So the aura, the physical aura, is those things which are uh, impermissible to look at for for uh, for the average person. Meaning uh, your kubul, your your um, your private parts, your your you know for the male and the private parts of the female, and then the dubur, meaning the anus area, that those are impermissible to be showing. And a part of the aura hesia, the physical aura. The aura manawi, as we mentioned, is those things like the shortcomings, the sins, the mistakes uh, that people fall into and that they do physically or what have you, or or their aura pertaining to their manners and so forth. So it is uh, something which is required of the servant to cover the aurat of the Muslims in general. This is what one of the benefits we gain from this tarjama, this this um, this title that Imam Anu we mentioned, and we gain from this ayat that in general it is a requirement for the Muslim to cover the mistakes, the uh, mistakes of the Muslims in general, and this includes both. Uh, Or this excludes that the, the person who loves to spread wickedness about those who believe. Okay? And those who do that, this includes two ways in which they do this. Uh, some people, they love to spread wickedness in a Muslim society. They love to spread the wickedness and advertise the, the wickedness and the mistakes there. So they enjoy that. And may Allah forgive us for falling into these sins, amin, and protect us from falling into these sins, amin, ya rabbil alameen. The second type <coughs> is the muhabba in tantashir fi shakhs ma'ayin. So the second type of a way the person uh, falls into the sin is by loving or enjoying to spread the wickedness of a particular individual. Some people, they enjoy. We're not talking about somebody who's law here, who's open in their sin. But we're talking about loving, so you hear something about a, a da'i, someone who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or a particular individual, and it may or may not be true even. But you love to expose them. You enjoy speaking about them. In fact, you become more endeared and loved with your companions in your group, in your hizb, your hizb meaning from hizbiyah, you become more beloved to them because you have a new expose of so-and-so. You've spoken about so-and-so more. You found a sin that they do and you spread it. So they love you more for that. That's the reason they love you. Because if you speak about them, they will hate you. The al-wala'u al-bara is, is clear. And this is an, a, a, a deviant trait that we have to be careful of. Because it is hisbia, it is ayn al hisbia, it is the exact uh, definition of hisbia, that you make love and hate for you and your crew, love and hate for you and your group, love and hate for you and your sect, love and hate for those who think only exactly like you, whether it's on the haq or whether it's on batal, and you don't even know the difference. For some of our brothers and sisters, Allah musta'an. So. Be careful about enjoying to spread wickedness about anyone. Then Imam Anawi he comes to the hadith. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ لَا يَسْتَتْرُ عَبْدٌ عَبْدٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا سَتْرُ هُوَ اللَّهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ رُوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ He began with the hadith in Sahih Muslim. The hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, uh, who narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the servant does not conceal the fault of another servant except that Allah will conceal his fault 
on the day of judgment. Every single one of us needs our faults concealed. Yom al -Qiyamah. So be careful of speaking about people. Wa'iyadhan billah. Some of the guidance we gain from this hadith. One of the things uh, we gain from this hadith, Al-Jizam in Jins Al-Amal. فَمَنْ سَتْلَ الْمُسْلِمِنْ جَزَاهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِسَتْرَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So, uh, Al-Jizam in Jins Al-Amal. Meaning that part of the reward that you receive is directly related to the reward or the action that you did. So, for example, the one who conceals uh, the faults of a Muslim, then Allah will conceal his faults on the Day of Judgment. So, Al-Jaza min jins al-amal. The reward for doing that is similar to the reward, uh, is similar to the actual action of doing that. Likewise, likewise or in opposition to that, or contrary to that, is doing the opposite. Exposing someone in this life, you know, with the intention of spreading evil. I'm not talking about talking about someone from Ahl Bid'ah who is clearly misguiding people openly. But we're talking about exposing people, seeking to exposing people, loving to expose people, striving to expose people, and spreading evil throughout the world in the lands. The second guidance we get from this hadith is that covering or a sitter يَتَّبَعَ الْمَصَالِحِ فَإِنْ كَانَتَ الْمَصْلَحَ فِي سِتْرَ سِتْرَنَا أَوْ كَانَتْ فِي كَشْ كَشَفْنَا Very important here. And this is what the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah uh, constantly mention in their books قَدِيمٍ وَحَدِيثٍ That this sitr, this covering of someone's faults, this is also built upon the, uh, the benefit or the rectification of doing so. So if there is benefit in covering the fault of someone, then that's what we do. And if there is benefit in exposing this person, I'm talking about Sharia benefit, I'm talking about something that brings you closer to a law, something that helps protect the community, then we expose that. So for example, one example would be someone wants to marry a sister and we know about this sister this sister has such and such she's you know done many open sins she's been married three times and every one every single time this is an example she committed adultery uh, or something or she was known for such and such sin and such and such and such and such from the maslaha it will be from the benefit the one who is proposing to marry her and we know about them he should be informed so that he knows fully what he's getting into or likewise the opposite situation so this is what we see so there's maslaha another benefit of this maslaha or another example of this maslaha or benefit would be if we find an individual who is spreading bid'ah I'm talking about clear bid'ah. I'm not saying that you, that someone, so-and-so doesn't agree with you about Sheikh so-and-so. Or so-and-so, you know, I'm talking about something that's clear. We know so-and-so is an innovator. They, uh, you know, follow certain Sufi Sheikhs and they believe such and such and such and such. Okay? <clears throat> then in that situation, and they are teaching the people, then we should, there's... Maslaha, there's benefit in warning the people who are following that individual that they should be made aware that so and so uh, is, uh, you know, a follower of Hamza Yusuf and is a follower of so and so, and they are uh, teaching people those same principles and that Hamza Yusuf and others are spreading, you know, these in Hirafat, in Aqidah, that they are spreading new, new. Uh, Hamim Keller, his principles, or, or the other guy in Cambridge, or what have you, all these <coughs> major Sufis who have who have Mukhalafat Zahira. They have big uh, differences sh from, from Ahlul Sunnah, from Ahlul Sunnah to Jama'ah, in their Aqidah, in their creed, in what they, and they teach the people openly these things. 
and their scholars are openly, some of them are open heretics. billah. So, in that situation, there would be maslaha, there would be benefit in exposing and advising the people as, as a part of a deen and a siha, as, as far as, as, as protecting religion and giving good advice to the people. These are just some of the um, guidance that we gain from this hadith and this ayat, and we ask Allah Almighty to forgive us of our many, many sins, anything that we've done or said, which goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us and bless us to correct them. And anything that we said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.